Hey there, welcome back. Hope you guys had a good break. Um, and great to see people are joining in on the conversation on Twitter at World Summit AI with the hashtag WSAI20. We look forward to hearing your thoughts. So next we have our curtain raiser panel to discuss AI and standardization. Joining us today, we have Vishal Chatrith, CEO and co-founder of Second Mind, Paul Clark, CTO of Akado, Mark Buckle, head of Log Tech Innovation Center, Kuhn and Nigel. And moderating today, we have Anushka Sharma, founder of Knot. Welcome, guys. Over to you, Anushka. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you so much. Well, we're really excited about today's session. Um, and before I ask our panel members to introduce themselves, let me just set the scene. Um, today, we're going to be um, talking about making sense of data and how to tackle the data problem today to improve standards for the future. It may be asked that if AI research has already produced mature technologies and this field is now potentially ready for standardization, what can we do to get best practice in organizing and implementing AI? In today's session, um, this situation of AI in the context of needs of standardization is something we're going to dive into by making sense of data initially and then moving the conversation forward. Many standards in development organizations worldwide work on norms for AI in artificial intelligence technologies and AI related practices. At the same time, governments, companies, and um, many other organizations massively invest in research on AI. Today, we've assembled representatives working across technology and sectors to bring together the power of AI for their businesses to serve the organizational goals, as well as benefiting us, the consumer. So joining today, we have Vishal, Paul, and Mark um, to really discuss and dive into the conversation around frameworks for AI standards and how those kind of standards are growing. Um, and with our EPIC panel, I'm going to ask Vishal just to introduce yourself and welcome you um, to say hello. Hi. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Anushka, and uh, great to be here. Uh, I'm Vishal Chatrath. I'm the co-founder and CEO at uh, Second Mind. And uh, we are a Cambridge-based company, uh, 90 staff. Uh, we've been around since 2016. The two interests that we have uh, are the short-term interests in AI and machine learning how to make it useful uh, in a world where the data that we have is sparse, uh, it's not fantastically well recorded. And for uh, typical business problems that we are solving, we have tens or even hundreds of data points rather than uh, kind of millions upon millions, which people assume there are. And uh, the second interest we have as Second Mind is how do we look a bit further into the future and think about how to make a uh, AI and machine learning uh, ubiquitous, where it really becomes a part of the fabric of our society. And for that, there are some challenges that we need to address uh, the same way we address them in the world of uh, mobile communications 20 years ago uh, around standardization. And I'm uh, specifically interested in standardization around data schema. Uh, and I'll talk more about that later. Fantastic. Paul, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, Paul Clark. Uh, Chief Technology Officer at Ocado. Um, those of you who don't know us, I mean, historically we're known as being a grocery retailer, but uh, we're an international um, platform provider for some of the largest and most innovative retailers around the world, um, helping them, you know, do online grocery scalably, sustainably, and profitably, as we've done for ourselves. And that platform business um, and our other activities as a technology business run on data and on machine learning and AI and on digital twins and cloud and IoT. And I suppose, you know, one way to describe what we do is we design, build and operate smart machines at scale uh, now indeed around the world. And um, so, you know, very interested in the whole area of standardization, both for Ocado, but also because uh, some of the other hats I wear, like being a member of the AI Council and um, the robotics growth partnership and as well as it, it, this is a really important area you know the whole area of uh this kind of data machine learning infrastructure that we need to build um at a national scale and indeed at a planetary scale thank you so much mark welcome please introduce yourself 
Hi, Anushka. Uh, so, Mark Buckle, Head of LogTech Innovation at Kinnanagal. Uh, for those of you who haven't come across the name Kinnanagal before, we are a leading global provider of, of innovative and fully integrated uh, supply chain solutions. My role today is managing the global innovation portfolio um, and the practical application of new technologies, AI being, being one of those. Um, currently based in, in Switzerland, working at Kinnanagel's head office in Zurich. Uh, we're currently deploying AI in, in many areas of, of the business, most notably on our digital platforms, matching uh, customer demand with, with supply, um, making data actionable within documents and, and images. There's, there's some topics and projects on the, on the go from an email recognition point of view, and we're also uh, using AI to predict customer demand. So super excited to be part of, uh, of, of this discussion today and looking forward to, to some fruitful discussions. Fantastic, thank you so much. I thought it'd be really good to sort of start with a kind of, um, it sounds a very simple question to ask, but it's really around um, making data good and ensuring that we have good data sets. Um, also finding data where in your business you may have gaps for it. Um, I'd love to talk about how we can empower companies to embrace artificial intelligence when the data they've got might be imperfect. And I think this is a perfect time for Vishal and Mark maybe to come together and talk about the work you've done together um, around the supply chain and logistics. Yep, uh, absolutely. Uh, so I'll probably give the perspective as a, as a technology provider and, and hand over to Mark as the uh, uh, business expert. So uh, from our perspective, what was very interesting and, and, and unique when we started to work in supply chain and logistics is just to be able to understand the kind of data that we are talking about. So uh, there was a, a fallacy sort of going around that the world is replete with massive amount of data and big amount of data and you know with big data you can do uh use deep neural nets or all sorts of other uh, you know fancy bits to come to certain results and that might be true for certain sectors but uh, definitely in, in some areas of supply chain we didn't see that because while you know uh, uh, companies like cuny and Nardo, they do ship uh, thirty thousand or they manage thirty thousand containers a day and at a macro level there might be a lot of data from a decision-making perspective, what really becomes important where uh, to add value is that for a, a particular trade lane specific to a particular container and a customer, how much data do you have? And what we saw was that for the last few years, and which is much representative on how supply chains work, the data and activity is very bursty. So if I was to give an example of April, you will have spring, summer, autumn, winter collections. So you will have lots of zeros in terms of containers shipped by a particular customer to a particular location, a spike, kind of lots of zeros in spike. And that you can't apply any uh, traditional AI and machine learning models, whether it's deep neural nets, whether it's um, uh, any of the uh, traditional forecasting ways. So you have to come up with a completely new way of thinking by using a combination of uh, probabilistic forecasting techniques together with human uh, uh, experience and human uh, knowledge to build up a tool where humans and machines could work together and we could uh, achieve some sense and some uh, kind of useful output that was uh, beneficial to Kyrgyz and Nava. Mark, would you yeah, 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 sure. So th I would like to answer the question, first of all, a bit more broadly. Uh, firstly, um, I think I would say that AI is, is part of the solution to resolve imperfect data environments. And it, and it isn't dependent on having a perfect data environment in the first place, that that caused quite a bit of debate at first around when is the right time to start. But we, we, our experience showed us that we can, you can start even within an imperfect situation. So how do we em empower companies to embrace AI? Well, 
I think the first part of this is is education, regardless of the size of, of the company, small, medium or, or large. You need to at first understand AI, how it can be applied and the use cases that exist around the business that can be tackled uh, and the size of the pie, the size of the value that exists. So once we got to that point, we we then explored the marketplace and, and we found a company like Second Mind. Um, and they stood out from the rest because they they really came across as being experts in applying AI models in spa, with sparse data sets, as Vishal has, has just referred to. So we started off with predicting customer demand and what what we found to be very useful with within all of this was was actually there are many data sources that can be used in theory to predict customer demand right the way from historic order information uh, to future uh, to booking data that's coming up on the short term horizon market indices weather and news data seasonality data all of these data sets in theory should impact on a demand forecast but actually going through this this ai uh, practical project enabled us to go data source by data source and determine what data was actually just noise and what was the data that was reliable and that would have a positive impact on the forecasts that we needed to to produce it's really interesting that you, you bring up noise. I mean, I've been looking at um, data sets from satellites and one person's noise is another person's gold mine of data. Exactly. Actually, that's really helping to tackle the issue of space debris, um, which is very integral, you know, going forward as more satellites get launched. Um, I think the biggest disruptor right now has been COVID, right? And the whole pandemic situation that we all find ourselves in is, um, as leaders in the ecosystem in our respective roles. And I think um, there was actually a report published by the RSA that COVID-19 could rapidly accelerate the pace of technological change. And Paul, you sit in a role where you openly talk about really being like having a stealth disruptive team that's constantly internally self-disrupting. What has the crisis taught us about data and the infrastructure that we need to support it? Um. Well, I suppose in terms of our own business, you know, uh, we, we we were, you know, lucky to have invested a lot in in building that infrastructure for ourselves, whether it be, you know, the kind of the synthetic in modeling environments or the, the, the way in which we collect uh, our data and use the kind of the data exhaust from our swarms of smart machines and our warehouses to optimize those processes. But I suppose looking out, I think one of the early reflections uh, more nationally was that we were missing a lot of the data